This is episode 91 of our Road to Unicum, and today we review the tier 7 Swedish medium tank, the Leo. So if you're looking at playing those tier 8 to 10 new Swedish medium tanks, you've got to go through this one. We're going to look at a pair of battles. First up is this tier 8 Redshire, and then we're going to look at a steps battle. One of the awesome things with the matchmaking changes that were released just before 1.5 is that you see a lot more same tier battles, so battles with all tanks of the same tier, or battles such as this one where there are at most two tiers, so seven versus eights, and the occurrence of the three tier battles, so six versus eights, eights versus tens, it's dropped meaningfully. Now there are going to be uh, several things I don't want to talk about in this video. So first of all, a lot of people think that the Leo sucks. I don't think that it sucks as all, at all. I play it to like a 65% win rate solo, and then since I platooning, I've been pushing that up closer to 70%. I'm not going to tell you that it's a great tank. It has some serious limitations, but you're going to watch me work around them. So you have two choices of gun. You can either go with the pea shooter, which is a high rate of fire. What I wanted to do with the Leo was see how good it would work with the high caliber gun. So this is the 300 alpha gun. Now there's a couple things to note. The gun has a relatively long reload, uh, but more importantly it has a very long aim time, right? And so what a lot of players end up doing is the exact wrong thing. They think, well, if the gun handling is terrible, I'm going to get really close to tanks so I have a better chance to hit them. But the problem is that this tank is fairly large in terms of profile and it has no meaningful armor. Right now, you'll notice I very intentionally knocked down a series of trees over where I am, like pretty much every tree here. So I've got this long row that now kind of cuts uh, northwest to southeast a little bit. So I can move up and through, um, up and back in this knockdown tree area. And it's essentially a long bush line that I just created. Right, And there are two reasons why I'm going to use this. One is so that if our heavies are failing on the zero line, that I can spot and provide some fire, and it's also so I can get flanking fire on any of their tanks that happen to go toward the middle of the map. And this is a really important concept. You guys have heard me talk about arguably the most important concept in this game is the first shot advantage, right? And you can gain the first shot advantage by using vision control. So if your opponents don't see you and you have time to aim in, that'll give you the first shot advantage. And where I am, there is sort of two and a half of the three things that I talk about, that magical trifecta where you've got a really good field of view, which I do here, soft cover, which I do because I knock down these trees to make a very deep and long bush line. I sort of have adjacent hard cover in terms of this ridge here, which will protect me from the tanks in front of me. If I do get spotted, I gotta be careful because I'm quite arteable and those tanks over by the five line, like so their WYSI 131, their P43 and E25 can potentially shoot me, right? But overall, I found this to be a reasonably good place to go. Um, I wouldn't in this tank, I don't have a full camo crew yet, and since this tank is fairly large, what I wouldn't do in it is go down to the awesome spotting bush line that connects the D6 to D7 bushes. I would go there in a light tank or in a very fast, uh, smaller medium, not in this one. And notice I'm kind of rocking back and forth here just in case their tanks over by F5 would be looking to fire at me. But what was really sweet, you know, I hit that Chrysler on the side as he's crossing through the gap and part of what I want to do here is help freeze these tanks right or provide some flanking fire to keep our IS-3 and our Luva alive as long as possible. Now I don't agree at all with what our Luva is doing. He's backed up so much to kind of take himself out of the fight. It's a save my own ass strategy. I think it's a terribly selfish thing to do especially as a top tier heavy and then one thing to note with the Leo is the shell velocity. It, this is sort of like a derp gun that you're firing AP, but the shell velocity is pretty glacial. So, you know, in long distance shots like the ones that I had, you kind of got to really, uh, really well time the, you know, distance, right, and hope to lead your target appropriately or guess where they're going to be. Uh, I'll still take shots like, you know, one of the most important things or common things you'll see Unicums do is just keep their gun hot. Constantly keep it on reload. You want to fire as much as possible as long as you have decent shots. Like I fired on their Udez that was coming down here. And here you can see the Udez because his turret is aiming to my left. I've got a pretty decent side turret shot. Now I've landed two shells on him, you know, ch took out uh, just a little over 600 hit points from his tank. And that's the, the glorious thing about having a 300 alpha gun at tier 7. I mean, it hits hard. Right. The main thing I just got to do is be patient because I've got a long reload and I need to make sure to conserve my hit points as smartly as possible. Uh, but, you know, like I said, the first shot advantage, which you can gain by using version control, can greatly offset tanks that have terrible gun handling. Like there, you can see I got to fully aim in on the Leo because he doesn't know I'm there. I'm sitting in those trees that I knocked over 
And so, you know, I like I got to be careful because their RDs could hit me here. But you know, this this position that I'm in is actually reasonably strong as long as our heavies don't die. Once they die, I need to be careful because then the enemies could push across over to C9. But even then, I can still use these bushes to gain the first shot advantage and you know provide intelligence for our RDs so that they can keep working these guys. And now you can see that now this 112 has really good armor. I think I'd fired on the 112 earlier and bounce off of it, but because he had gone around and was giving me the side of his turret, you know, the side or back of an opponent's head is generally going to be really soft. So we've, you know, by, by coming over here, right, we've sort of saved this area from completely collapsing, and what I've managed to do is meaningfully weaken their tanks. Like, this guy, see, like, he should not have stopped where I was. He knows that I could be in these trees. He has to assume that I'm there, and I put him into one-shot ter territory and gets finished off. And again, I had plenty of time to aim in because he can't see me. Right, and now this Leo here, I do want to take him out. Just And he's sort of caught in air. He's tracked. And he's making a mistake. He's actually driving and giving me a better target. Now he's totally one-shottable. Right? And I consider chasing him. But if their RDs are not done by this point, they've kind of figured out that I'm anchoring this flank. The one thing that's amazing too, and I'm actually typing this in chat, is I cannot believe our RDs are still alive. Like, their Wizzy 131 and Type 59 could at any time press W to go north along the one, two, and three lanes. And once they clear out our RD, they're behind us, like we're totally done, right? I don't know why they didn't push down, uh, but if I if I were in their situation, I would have been all over running straight to E1 and then east along the A lane and picking off the RDs because they're sitting ducks, right? The main thing I need to be concerned about is, you know, where where is their Wizzy, right? He's the lone light tank that's available left in this battle. And this is a very good map for spotting. And I got to be careful. Remember, when I'm on top of this ridge like this, I'm pretty exposed. I am going to take one shot on the Leo, or rather, I was going to, but then the Wizzy's coming to run forward. He's taking a terrible approach line. If he wanted to approach, what he should have done, in my opinion, is gone on the outside, the west of this four ridge, right? And because that way, he wouldn't have been spotted on the interior of that ridge, like where I spotted him. Okay, Arluva is doing something good. He really should head down over to. E9 and just sit there and hold the corner so that he's not RDable, but if anything comes cl uh, close to him, he's going to pick him off. Thankfully, our RDs are finally getting it. Like you can see, my platoon mate, Tiger Hunters, he's a smart guy. He's already moved to the east. These guys should have figured out a long time ago the, the best place to be is further east along the A lane, probably around A6, A7, A8. And, you know, I'm going to counter where I believe they should come. If that Type 59 had any awareness whatsoever he would have pushed straight to a1 so what i'm going to do i'm staying beneath the ridge so that they can't spot my approach obviously the type 59 is a tear up and he's got very meaningful armor right so i got to be really careful but i was expecting when i came here that i might spot him leaving that castle area over by e1 e2 the thing that Arluva is doing here which really bothers me is he's actually backing off like he's actually moving into the open into a worse position if he's over there by the E9 area, he's got hard cover from Artie, he can brawl, he can use his gun depression. Right now he's actually fleeing behind our Arties. And so the two Arties moving southeast are complete morons, and our Luva is also a moron. The Arties should never be in front of other friendly tanks. That makes absolutely no sense. And our Luva is finally gonna kind of chase him, but I'm telling him, it's like, come on, dude, like seriously, please, please push up. Um, our Arties are panicking too much at this point. I've seen yeah, I'm going to make the generalization. A lot of RDs are driven by very bad players uh, who don't understand how to read map or situations. And in this case, sometimes they're getting either antsy, impatient. Like, we've still got 6 minutes and 20 seconds left. There's no reason to rush, right? But by moving forward now, they've been lit by the T28 HTC. That's an easy one shot. Now our M12 knows where the T28 is. And, you know, you always wonder, like, RDs, why well, can shotgun him? It's like, you can try to shotgun him. You've got a gun that has the worst gun handling of pretty much any tank in the game, but sure, go ahead and try to take out a tank frontally. Like, is that smart? No, that's not smart. It's entirely not smart. But the thing is, like, I've stayed here as long as I can. The Type 59 hasn't pushed. I don't know where he is. It's still utterly baffling that he didn't push north along the one or two lane, but I gotta assume if he's not coming now, he's never coming, or he's gone somewhere else, right? And the battle is happening now on the west side of the map. What I wanna do is get up on this ridge line right above me, because this affords a pretty good field of view and see if I can spot anything, right? Either their M12 or their Type 59, figure out kind of what's happened. 
Part of our problem for our M12 is because he's having to cower behind a rock, he can't use his gun, right? And so he's he's self-nerfing his DPM or his ability to attack because he's now too close to the enemy. And if, if he moves out from behind the rock, they're going to kill him. Okay, so this is a bit of a terrible decision on my part. I thought 155 silver AP pen, there must be somewhere I can get a shot. And the answer is no, actually, I can't. And one thing to be really wary of with the Leo is... The top speed forward is decent. The reverse speed absolutely sucks, right? And so I ate two shells there. Totally bad from a hit point perspective. Their Leo, their Leo gave me that shot by stopping, even though that was from, was that probably, yeah, that's over 445 meters away. I hit him. But, you know, in this case, he stopped moving, which gives me the opportunity to fully aim in. The thing I got to be worried about with this Type 59 is he'll kill me in two shots. You know, and I'm going to have trouble penetrating him unless I can figure out a way to get a better angle on him. But I can see he's rushing me. He, he should do this. He knows where I am now, and he's pushing clockwise around the hill. So what am I going to do? Not go near him. That would be the, non, the not smart thing to do. I need to back up. As a matter of fact, watching this now, I probably should have turned fully around instead of driving backwards because the reverse speed, as you can see here, is limited to about 19 kilometers an hour backing up. Not terribly fast, right? But if we know he's coming clockwise around the hill, I'm going to also go clockwise in the hopes that I can catch him from behind and get some flanking fire on him. So the thing is, it looks like he spotted our um, Luva, right? We exchange shots. That's actually better for me. Now their Type 59 is one-shottable. I do have a problem where, you know, my ammo rack's damaged. I'm not going to be able to repair it for another 13, 14 seconds here. And moreover, I have to try to make it so that the next shot that I take kills this Type 59, right? And thankfully for me, he's kind of caught in an in-between position. And I take him out. Okay, one already just fired and missed, and I'm going to go ahead and drive as fast as possible and zigzag, you know, as much as I can just to kind of make their already think. Now, a really common tomato move would be to just go over the hill directly and then shoot on the M12. I'm not a tomato, right? I'm going to take my time, circle around clockwise here, come up behind these bushes so that there is soft cover between the two of us and then again vision control minimizes awful gun handling i can take my time aiming in and now this game's pretty academic yeah the crazy thing is this battle's gone on for so long that you know tiger is actually almost out of ammo and that's fine you know i mean the, the great thing is taking out the type 59 pretty much sealed the game you know once that guy's dead it really uh he he should have just chased me up and over the hill the second he saw me he put two shells in me uh, I think he was a little bit too conservative. You know, coming around clockwise like he did um, around C4, C5, he was putting himself at risk at getting shot at by the Luva. And, you know, that might have happened no matter what he did. But I just, there's no reason, you know, if he had 700 hit points and I had, you know, about the same, there's no reason why he shouldn't have killed me, right? The thing I need to be careful of is here, Tiger's just going to got, you know, one shot. And ideally, he's going to wait until that guy's stopped. And I can get the first shot advantage because, you know, I know he's coming at me around the corner so I can pre-aim and I tried something cuter. I thought, well, maybe I'm fast enough to kind of get by him. No, that's not going to happen. But that's okay. I Frankly, like, that's good enough. Like, he's dead. That's all I care about. Uh, and so, ended up getting an ace tanker badge for that battle. 3,300 damage done. Uh, only like 400 spotted, uh, 440 damage spotted, but those four clutch kills, and most importantly, uh, stayed alive long enough to drag the battle out and then pick off their tanks one at a time. Okay, so... This is another battle with only a two-tier spread, so tier sixes and sevens, which is great. And the eastern side, I always play, if I'm a light tank, I'll go to mid. So I would go, for example, to the F6 bush or thereabouts, and or I would go to the eastern side of the map. I don't play the western side of the map. Western side of the map here, there's a long stretch you know, along the one and two lanes, which is mainly meant for brawling. Uh, there isn't much in the way of soft cover, right? so I don't recommend going there unless you're in assault tank or in... Heavy, but I would still prefer to go east because the terrain on the east side it's so much more workable, right? And you can get, relatively speaking, a little bit more artery safe because of the ditches and such. Uh, the other thing to consider too is once you get down and underneath people, it's really easy, especially if you've got good gun depression, to you know pick your spots and then finish them off. All right, so this is one of the things which is kind of tough here is you know these obviously my gun my shell velocity is slow, my aim time is long. And so I'm not necessarily going to have a good chance at shooting these guys. What I did want to try to do is get to the D0 rock and bush. So that has that magical trifecta, a decent field of fire. Not great, but a decent field of fire, uh, soft cover with adjacent hard cover. And there's a matching rock on the other side over by 
B8. Now, part of the problem is I got spotted coming in here, and that kind of ruins part of the fun here, because now they might blind fire the bush on my right, and they might hit me. I do find, by the way, the rock on the other side is actually better, uh, because you have soft cover meaningfully on both sides of the rock, so you can kind of pick which side you want to poke out from. In this case, those little bushes just to my left, those aren't enough unless I was like grasshopper-sized tank, and obviously I'm not. Okay, so part of the problem here is that I'm so close to that layout that if I go around this rock, even though there's a bush there, we're going to be close enough that he's probably going to spot me, right? Matter of fact, that's what happens here, and we exchange shots. That's generally not a good idea. If you're exchanging damage at a one-to-one -one ratio, you're not gaining any ground, and really, you should be doing at least a three-to-two ratio, one-and-a-half to one ratio in terms of damage, uh, if not two, right? Okay, so... Um, that was my bad. I was hanging out just a little too far with the Cheeto. And, you know, I do go ahead and land one shot. So at least I'm ahead in terms of that exchange. But, you know, it's really too early to have lost 460, you know, of my hit points. And you have to assume that the battle is going to go longer than you think, right? And so that is a really sweet shot there in the Tiger P. And again, that's, you know, because I'm behind a bush and they can't see me, I can take my time aiming in, offset that awful gun handling. And, you know, people have said, you know, why don't you use... The BB gun, you know, you get, you know, like 2K DPM base instead of 1500 base. It's like, well, in a lot of cases, DPM is theoretical. You know, I, DPM could only be fully uh, realized or actualized if you're sitting out in the open, you and your opponent, and you're just firing each other nonstop. In the real world, that doesn't happen. And keep in mind, too, one of the nice things is so the, you know, with this tank with the big gun, reload here showing is about nine seconds, right? And so that's just under how long it takes for if you've been spotted, how long you need to pull back uh, before you're no longer spotted, right? So basically, you can you can throw a shell there, a big boom, hopefully land your 300 alpha, and pull back behind cover, and then wait until you're no longer lit, and then you'll be reloaded again. Okay, so now the, the thing is we've clearly lost the H and J lanes, right? And for that matter, uh, our tanks that went down here, for whatever reason, a number of our mediums went to the southwest side of the map, which I think is a complete waste of time unless you're in a really good brawling tank. And again, the, the nice thing is because I'm so far, I'm out of spotting range pretty much, aside from that T-52, that I can fully aim in. Now, problem is if they're driving directly at me, that's going to be the strongest armor profile, so I don't really have a good shot here. Moreover, this isn't the place where Unicums go. This isn't the smartest place. And one thing to know is like you should be willing to try different things. Like obviously, I'm going to recommend to you a position which you're going to see for some very is is super strong based on the way it's used, right? But you should try different things, experiment with the map. And me getting shot by that Cromwell, that's equally my fault as his fault, right? Like if he's if he's zoomed in because he's got a high rate of fire in sniper mode, he's not he might not see me until I'm just pulling right in front of him, right? And I could have taken the, the four extra seconds to drive around behind him to the east so that that didn't happen. So that's equally on me as it is on him. And you guys, one thing that I try to do to help prevent that, because it sucks when you shoot a friendly off, obviously, is after I fire, I immediately zoom out. And it's because I want to make sure I have a broad enough perspective. Now, you can see a lot of this is yellow, but there's a green area right underneath this turret, that little flat panel where there's a viewport. And so, you know, that's a green area. And I'm lucky, admittedly, to hit it, but I knew where to aim. And then, um, so the nice thing here is, again, a terrible gun handling, long aim time, but offset because I'm getting the first shot advantage by proper use of vision. And this hill is tremendous. Tremendous field of fire because it's high up. Soft cover at the top and lots of hard cover. And using the aiming reticle, it's great that the penetration indicator takes into account uh, direction and angle. And that really is the proper place to shoot one of these AT tanks, either on the back hip for like the tortoise, and in the case of these lower ones, the superstructure on the side right there is the place to shoot it. Okay, so, you know, we have managed to claw our way back within one tank. A couple of our tanks are very stubbornly trying to cap, and matter of fact, the A44, that's the only remaining member of that two platoon is, if he hasn't already been, yeah, he's complaining us like we're morons, but in, in reality, like, I've talked about this so many times, trying to cap an encounter on a map, especially where there are two arties, is a fool's errand, and thankfully, Tiger hits that comet, and the stun slows him down, and then I'm able to put a shell into him, now he's one-shottable, right? The only decent thing that our tanks being in the cap, and by the way, that was a sweet shot. Now, granted, the VK is a reasonably large target moving at slow speed, so I can take all that in and lead him out properly. Uh, but the one thing that our tanks sitting in cap are doing is, you know, these guys are driving across the field. I don't know if they would have done it regardless. I don't think it's worth baiting people unless you're facing 
sniper TDs that have killer camo and you're like in a heavy, that's the one time where it would be okay to sit in cap and try to draw them out. Now, the, the great thing is I got hit earlier uh, by their 40 TP. He blind shot me, right? And that's kind of a bummer because because he hit me, with good on him for blind firing me, and because I drove out in front of my friendly Cromwell, I'm one shotable. If the Cromwell hadn't hit me, that 40 TP couldn't one shot me with the premium ammo, the <laughs> APCR, that he is firing at me in a tremendously squishy tank. Now, should he be firing APCR? No, it's an absolute waste of money. But the thing is, what I'm trying to do, because he's looking right at me, is try to wait until he fires and then I can take my time aiming in. But I can see he's starting to back up now. So he's mostly not thinking offense. He's trying to be defensive. And keep in mind, when most tanks are backing up like this, it totally throws their aiming reticle for a loop. And so I can sit here and aim in and take him out. Now, the other thing that I could have done that would have been a really subtle thing is shift a little bit to the right when I came up um, to the bush right by the rock. So at least if he's looking at me, it appears that he's looking right to the left of me, right? Okay, and then the only thing I really need to be concerned about here is this Cheeto getting this Churchill killed, uh, but my platoon mate takes us out, the Churchill's back and the Cheeto off, and Tiger makes a really sweet shot. At this point, the game is over. So that hill area, K0, there's so many battles where I've seen that one turn the battle. You know, whether you're talking with south spawn or north spawn, it's really powerful. And then I was very careful looking at the Artie, checking every gap carefully, except for this one. <laughs> this is where he was like sitting to ambush me. And I should have either just kept driving or just barely peeked and then pulled back because that was like one of the few remaining bushes that were available to that guy to kill me. And so now I'm. we should still win this, right? Tiger Hunter is still alive. This Churchill, if he just presses the W key and heads down through the ditch, you know, or heads down the 4-5 lane, depending on where that M12 is spotted. But one thing I was telling Tiger is where he is, he can't see much, right? There's this huge wall directly to his west, right? So I was telling him to get up here. So if he if he turns sharp to his right, you see those bushes up on top of this hill, he can get up there and he can be hidden in the bushes, but see well, right? And as it turns out, it doesn't really matter because the M12 had also gone to the opposite side of this hill. So now it's just a matter. All our Churchill needs to do is keep driving southeast down through the ditch, right? And then he would have easy shots on their arty. And the thing is, if their arty fires at Churchill, then Tiger Hunters can just go around shooting. As a matter of fact, their arty uh, in a moment here is going to fire. And once he does that, then Tiger can go down. But the Churchill's like taking the most irrationally long, like he's putting these huge rocks between him and the opposing arty. So their opposing arty fires at Tiger. And again, their opposing arty really can't wait because he has to assume that the Churchill is coming, but that allows Tiger to drive down the hill and then finish him off. But man, that was painful watching the Churchill drive. I just sometimes like, I don't, like, <laughs> it's baffling like watching people in real time. I just don't understand the thought process. So we managed to call this one back. As a matter of fact, like I, I think our platoon out damaged the other 12 tanks combined. Um, so poll on my community page about the new matchmaking. It actually was released just before patch 1.5, but it's amazing because 67% of people said they're either satisfied or very satisfied, and it's so rare to see a change have such a positive reception in the community. And so I got to give props for Wargaming for this one. I've hated the matchmaker for years, all the way up until this change was made. Now you can play tier 8 solo and platoons and not worry about getting chain sucked into tier 10 battles or other tiers like that. Far more enjoyable. So let me know if you got any questions on this video. Like obviously I'm playing the Leo in service of unlocking the tier 8 and up Swedish Udez medium line. And so I look forward to reviewing those for you. Take care.